Today, I have a very special lens to show you. A lens that many have been asking me to review since I did this 17mm 0.95 Metacon video a couple of months ago. Here it is, the 7 Artisan 35mm 0.95. Hi, my name is Jimmy Chang. I'm a professional photographer and filmmaker. If you're new here, this channel is about sharing my 16 years of commercial experience with an aim to help you become better photographer, videographer, or both. Together with tech and gadget reviews to help you get those shots and videos better and quicker. I also focus a lot on Micro Four Thirds and Olympus Gear 2 because I'm an Olympus ambassador too. So smash that subscribe button and hit that bell to stay notified for all my upcoming contents. Well, 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 here we go again, looking at yet another ultra fast, but more interestingly, affordable 0.95 aperture lens for your Micro Four Thirds system. While we're waiting impatiently for Olympus or Panasonic to release a super fast lens for us creeps to either peep at people's bedroom at night or to make as many bulker balls as possible so you don't even remember where you took the shot, China has been super active in that regard. 7 Artisan has been making lenses for cameras for a while. And you may not remember that I did another, well, very controversial review a few years back with their 50mm 1.1 for Leica cameras. Because I was comparing it to an ultra expensive Noctilux that cost 30 times more. But that's up for discussion another day. Today, we are going to look at this, the 7 Artisan 35mm 0.95 an affordable lens with a focal length and aperture that no one else is making for Micro Four Thirds. Well, at least at time of filming this review. If you've been following me since the beginning of last year, you may be aware that I've done quite a few Chinese manual lens reviews. Per Gear, Mitacon, Laowa, and now 7 Artisans. I must admit that I'm pretty impressed with the build quality from any of them. This 35mm 0.95 is no exception. Full metal with a very Germanic appearance. It even comes with an old school Leica like push on metal lens cap too. Aperture ring is clickless, which to me is always a negative for photographers. I much prefer something with physical feedback so I can develop some muscle memory when I'm shooting. However, for this particular lens, the aperture ring is a little too loose, even for video guys. I have accidentally changed the aperture setting a few times during my test. In contrast, the focusing ring is very, very, very smooth, like smoother than a baby's bottom, but perhaps a little too smooth that I can almost say is slippery. Quite good for fast action and experienced menu photographers, but definitely not for beginners. Well, at least it feels quite premium. Talking about premium, compared to per gear, 7 Artisan shows a bit more attention to the lens marking. Instead of printing the letters and numbers on the lens, they actually engrave it, giving it a much more classy appearance. The shiny black anodized lens mount is quite a touch too. I haven't seen anything like this before. It really looks good, <laughs> and I like it. With premium built, comes with premium weight. The 35mm 0.95 weighs at 369 gram, which is quite a bit considering it is only 63mm long and 56mm wide. Most of its weight comes from those huge glass elements that allows buckets of lights into the image sensor. This makes it slightly front heavy when using it with slimmer and lighter camera. It has basically the same weight as the EM10 Mark IV. When I was testing this lens, I much prefer using it on the larger cameras with bigger grips. To me, it fits perfectly with the EM1 Mark III, and it feels more natural too. Here comes the crunch. Even though this is an affordable 0.95 lens, you still want to know if you can use it at 0.95. With 11 elements in 8 groups, this is a fairly complex lens. But you kind of need that for a 0.95 lens. But how does it perform? You can see that at wide open aperture, this lens is pretty much expected at this price range. 
a little soft with some halo around the highlights. It certainly reminds me of some old vintage fast lenses, such as the Olympus OM 50mm 1.2. So if you're accustomed to modern binary look, you may as well stop here. But if you're like me, interested in a lens with characters, this 7 Artisan 35mm certainly has plenty at 0.95. Between wide open and 1.4, the results are pretty similar. When you stop down to 2.8, everything improves dramatically. Sharpness is very decent, but I think the sweet spot of this lens is around f6.3, with great sharpness in the center and consistent almost to the edges of the frame. Then the fraction sets in, in around f11. Bokeh? Well, it's very busy. You can get decent autofocus by choosing your background wisely. Due to chromatic aberration, any bokeh from highlight will have a ring on it. This creates a rather messy background, but when you turn around and shoot into the shadow, yeah, they become okay. So for that, Pergear lenses actually have better image rendering. There is also a hint of barrel distortion and vignetting, but they can be easily fixed in post. Finally, flare is visible too. With no lens suit included, it may be a problem for some, but you know I like my flare, so I'm okay with that as it's not as bad as some other lenses I've tested before, and I can definitely fully utilize its effect for my portrait shoots. Seven Artisan 35mm 0.95 is a very fast medium tele lens for Micro Four Thirds. Because of this focal length, many would use it for portrait. I would say that this lens excels in extreme low light black and white photography, it has plenty of characters to create interest in the frame. But for color works, well, it's a different story. I find it quite difficult to get what I want. I'm not worried about the vintage look at 0.95, but rather the onion ring bokeh that can potentially distract viewers and steal the attention from a subject in the frame. My feeling is mixed with this lens. I'm halfway recommending it to photographers. Unless you're a dedicated black and white guy, or similar to video, unless you are making a film noir, it's not a lens that you may want to maximize its subject isolation capability, again, due to its messy bokeh rendering. You can't argue with the price, it's certainly cheap for a 0.95 lens, but if it's a lens that can only be used for a certain type of photography and video, then it's a niche lens. If you're looking for a lens that can perform in any situations with a more familiar look and feel, I would recommend the Pergear 35mm that I review for less than a third of the price. So, you'll be the judge of it. After seeing the images in this video, is it something that you're looking for? Does it have the character that you want for your specific project? Let me know in the comment section down below. That's it folks, I hope you enjoyed this video and you know what to do now. Thumb if you liked it, and sub if you want to support this channel, and me. Peace. Okay.